Député de South Shore, St. Margaret's. A year ago, the Liberal MP from St. John's East, in a show of great compassion to Atlanta Canadians, said he was sick and tired about hearing from people complaining about the cost of heating. Mm. Then he said his fellow Liberal, then his, he and his fellow Liberals voted against removing the carbon tax from home heating. And after eight years, NDP Liberals now admit the carbon tax is hurting people and it's not worth the cost. Will the Prime Minister admit the pain he has caused and axe the entire carbon tax? Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Speaker, Canadians know that climate change is real, and Nova Scotians know that climate change is real. Over the past two years, we've had fires, we've had floods, we have hurricanes, but we've also heard that, Can that Nova Scotians need help and they need time. And that's why I'm proud that our government has incentivized heat pumps and created incentives for medium and low income families to ensure that they can make the transition to clean and affordable energy. Our government is committed to addressing climate change and we will be there to help all Canadians make that change. Good job. Then I have deputy to South Shore St. Margaret's. The announcement he referenced is from a panicking, plummeting Prime Minister. And after eight years, even that panicking Prime Minister now admits his carbon tax is not working. Yet the NDP Liberal government continues to punish Canadians with a carbon tax on everything. This Prime Minister is not worth the cost. 1,000 people last night in Nova Scotia demanded the Liberals axe the tax. When will the Prime Minister do his job and axe the entire carbon tax? Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Speaker, we want to save people money and fight climate change at the same time. We know that a price on pollution reduces emissions and puts more money in the pockets of middle class families. We also know that many families who use home heating oil in Atlantic Canada are having trouble making the switch, a switch that they want to make, Mr. Speaker, to a cleaner and cheaper source of heat, particularly in rural communities. That's why we're pausing the price on pollution and home heating oil for three years, doubling the rural rebate and creating a new program to deliver cleaner, more affordable heat pumps to families in the region while we save them thousands of dollars every year. It's been eight long, miserable years with this NDP Liberal government. A year ago, they voted to keep the carbon tax on home heating, and now they're in full panic mode with polling numbers and free fall. Their new re-election slogan is, elect them that will only quadruple the carbon tax right after the next election. No relief either for the second carbon tax the Prime Minister has piled on. My constituents know this Prime Minister is not worth the cost. When will the NDP Liberal government admit that their carbon tax is punishing Albertans and axe the entire carbon tax? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. What we announced yesterday is that we were going to double the rural top-up for Canadians who benefit from the implementation of carbon pricing. We will also, through a pilot project, make it free for Atlantic Canadians who want to switch to heat pumps, which will enable them to save $2,000 per year, Mr. Speaker. What is, it, what is it the Conservatives don't like about it? I'll tell you what they don't like about it. It's making Canadians less dependent from their big oil friends. That's what they don't like about it. They want Canadians to continue paying for inefficient, polluting and pricey system. Not, that's not what we want to do on this side of the House, Mr. Speaker. Then I have Deputy to Calgary Shepherd. It's obvious that side is in panic mode because of falling polling numbers. So they're they're serving us election gimmicks. This week's Food Bank report says that one in six Canadians are working hungry. They're working and are going to the food bank. Herman, in my writing, tells me he's been going to the food bank for almost two years. So does his brother and two of his friends. Another constituent told me he's okay. He's only skipping one meal a day and he's having cereal for the two other days. Herman and my constituents know this. The Prime Minister is not worth the cost. When will the NDP Liberal government treat Albertans fairly and axe the entire tax so they can put food on their dinner tables? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Well, Mr. Speaker, it's hard to take these champagne conservatives seriously as they continue <laughs> to stand up in this house and speak to the hardships that Canadians are feeling while every step of the way they oppose the very measures that our government has consistently put forward to help the most vulnerable. Measures like the Canada Child Benefit offering families hundreds of dollars per month to support their children and child care, which is saving families hundreds of dollars per month. Instead of weaponizing Canadians' hardship for political gain, perhaps they could consider supporting me real measures that help Canadians, like the Affordability Act. Before I proceed to the next question, I would ask all members on all sides of the House to please uh, keep your comments to the time that you're recognized and you have the floor so that all members can listen to the questions and to the answers. The Honourable Member from uh, Prince George, Peace River, Northern Rockies. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mark is a local grocery store owner in Dawson City. Mark has seen his already high shipping costs get slapped with a 94% fuel surcharge because of this Prime Minister's carbon tax. Uh, a dozen eggs is $8. A pound of butter is $9. And get this, a kilogram of cheese is $30. You Connors know they simply can't afford this Prime Minister any longer. Will this NDP Liberal government finally stop punishing you Connors and axe their carbon tax? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Canada Energy Regulator estimates that wind power will provide about 30 percent of total Canada's supply in 2050, compared to less than 6 percent in 2021. Now, according to a recent study by the Public Policy Forum, offshore wind could be for Atlantic Canada what, and I quote, oil, oil was for Texas or hydropower for Quebec. This is transformational for Atlantic Canada. My, I think a lot of Canadians, Mr. Speaker, are wondering why are, are the, is the Conservative Party opposing the development of clean renewable energy for Atlantic Canadians and, in fact, for all Canadians, Mr. Speaker. That's the question, Prince George, Peace River, Northern Rockies. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Despite this Prime Minister's fancy photo ops uh, yesterday, Yukoners are facing a cold winter where they have to decide between keeping their kids warm or keeping them fed. Carbon tax is causing transportation costs to double and food prices to skyrocket. Instead of making it better for struggling Yukoners, this NDP Liberal government is making it worse. After eight years, this Prime Minister simply isn't worth the cost. Yukoners want to know, will they end in its entirety the carbon tax? When? <laughs> Mr. Speaker, I respect the honourable member across the way speaking for the people of Yukon. We have a fantastic member of parliament on this side that actually represents the Yukon. And Mr. Speaker, I can tell you that the investments that we are making in that territory are transformational investments in our tourism industry, in making sure that we have climate resiliency. Mr. Speaker, what the Conservatives have against climate change is the fact that they don't believe in it. They ran on a policy to actually fight climate change. Now they're under new management. They don't care. We're due. We're going to fight climate change for you, Connors, and all Canadians. 